we're going to have a look at the three areas that I feel like you need to work on to build up that authority in your marketplace. There's the core authority, which is like who you are and what you've created. And just take the words that I say and substitute it with your business name if, it's, if you're a business or if you are the business. So just those, those words are interchangeable. Um, but, but what is the core of it? Uh, your website, because that's the reflection, regardless of um, how authoritative you are or are not currently, people, if they're going to do business with you in the current day and age, they'll Google you and they'll try and find your website and they'll use that as a way to get to know you. So you want to make sure that your website backs your story up. And then also, you want to make sure socially, then what proof do you have outside of you that backs up that you're, you know, you can stand here and say, oh, I'm awesome, I'm the, I'm the best. Uh, it's not until, like, that's important, that's part of it, but then you also need to have then someone else go, yeah, he's really good. I recognise him as an expert. So that's a part of it. So the core authority. The, the way to get core authority is you, you want to think about the problems that your target market is having. So your, your prospects, what are some of the problems that they've got? And you need to be better able to articulate their problems than they can. That's really key. If you know who your target market is, if you know what problems they're having and you can articulate it better than they can, then you embed that into your website and into the copy and into the emails and into every communication that you have with them. At a subconscious level, someone goes, they get me. That builds that trust. Then because you know my problem, you must have the solution. So you, you, you need to understand you know, what that, that, that problem is that they've got. You also need to, experts over time, express community concerns and they have, they have opinions about things. You, you, you want to make sure that you get to a place where you feel like you're actually adding value. It's not always just about the dollar. It's that Jim Rohn quote about adding enough value and then you know, if you help, help enough people get what they want, then you'll get what you want. So by doing that and, and putting them first, you, you'll get a, a much better engagement and you start to build up that, that authority. You also want to build up a body of work as well. Whether it's written, audio, you know, maybe it's podcasts like Tim was talking about for the audio, maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's written, it's blog posts on your site, maybe it's all of them. You probably should be doing all of them because everybody engages with different ways. You want to have all of this content that backs your story up. So when they do get to the website and they do start digging around, you've got a body of work. You're not just one of those websites that's five pages deep. You've got actual useful, relevant content. So on the, I've got there on the, the left, we've got the Melbourne SEO Services uh, blog. We do some stuff with podcasts. We've got um, a lot of YouTube videos as well. So that's the first thing, core authority. That's, that's, that's what you want to really think about. How, how do you present yourself? Because you'll weave that through all of your marketing. And then you feed it through to your website, which is the second area of building up this authority. You want to make sure that it's, it's clean, it's consistent, it matches with what the prospect is looking for. And I think it's really important to tell your story. People really engage with stories. I don't see enough storytelling on the web, but that's how people engage. That's how you differentiate. You, regardless of, you know, one of the things that, that gets people to understand who I am is by me telling my stories. And lots of you have watched lots of the videos that I've put out. By telling those stories, that kind of separates me from the rest. It explains who I am, how I got to where I am, and is the proof behind it. And then you can pick stories that kind of resonate with your target market as well. And again, all of that feeds into the website. I think storytelling is a huge part a lot of people are missing. And that goes for every business. They should be telling their story and why people should be working with them and not because you're cheaper, uh, you know, quicker, faster, easier. I mean, they're all throwaway terms. Everybody's that. You know, what is it that makes you different? And if you have a look at the way that Apple's website is, it's all consistent throughout the website. You know, it's the same font stylings. When you get an email, it feels all congruent. When you go to some of their social media platform, it all ties in. 
The, this is part of that point system that I was talking about. People are subconsciously adding all of these up. Some of these elements you're going to have, other elements you might not have. We, we want to try and tick as many of these boxes as possible because by doing that, that's how we get that authority positioning. You don't want a website that looks like this. So oftentimes, people come to me um, at, uh, at Melbourne SEO Services and they'll say, oh, you know, we want you to do some SEO. And I go, even if we did get people to your website, I don't think they're going to buy. <laughs> I, first step one is make sure that you've got great user engagement. Make sure people are easily navigating around the site. Make sure that they feel like they can trust you. That has to be step one before you even consider traffic. So oftentimes, a lot of times, I'll say to someone, look, we've got five other things that we need to fix first. When I go through a lot of these slides, and I put a lot of time into these slides, you'll see as we progress, um, I've put them in the order in which I think that things need to be fixed. So as I go through, I've, I've thought about this. So firstly, you need to get that core authority right. Think about it. I mean, over time, we're going to build that body of work, but give it some thought up front. But then we need to move to your website, and we do that even before we consider SEO and getting some of this content out there. And then the other component of this authority building, sorry, there were three. Um, how many were there? Three. three? Yep. Um, and the last one is social authority. So at this point, now you've got your core authority. You've got all of your content that backs up what you say. Then um, you've got your website authority because that now really backs up your story as well. Like that gives you the full rounded picture. And then we've got social authority. Now, how can you then get other people outside of you to go, oh, yes, they're an expert? How can you get references from someone else about you or your business being an expert in the space? Whether or not it's industry awards, whether or not you, know, you get recognised for something, you, know, you can use those logos, whether or not it's past clients, you know, having case studies and things like that to back it up. I mean, I've got that DaveRaves.com website, if anybody's seen it, where I just collect as much proof as I can and I put it all on one website. So regardless of what business I'm currently working in as, as an entrepreneur, I can point them back here and say, hey, here's 200 testimonials of people saying that I will deliver on my promises. And you want to start collecting these things now because we want to build all of these up so it gets to the point where it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that, hey, this person is the real deal. Thank <laughs> you.